Hawaii depends on fossil fuels for over 90% of our energy needs, making us the most fossil fuel dependent state. Gasoline powered cars create greenhouse gases that are changing our climate and making the future of our planet very uncertain. Hawaii also has the highest gas prices in the country, which means that we pay more to drive here than anywhere else in the US. So we set out to see if electric vehicles could help reduce Maui's dependence on fossil fuels before it is too late. It seemed like a good time to ask this question, since by 2012, nearly every major car maker is releasing their first electric vehicle. And two of them are already arriving on Maui. The Nissan LEAF is pure electric. Its uh, range is up to about 100 miles. The Chevy Volt, on the other hand, starts with an EV mode, which is electric, and it switches to a gas generator that has a range of up to 375 miles. We're very, very excited that we have both the electric vehicles and it feels good to offer a greener choice to the community. So does anyone already own an EV on Maui? And what do they have to say about it? Well, meet Doug, owner of the first Nissan LEAF on Maui. So you asked me what inspired me to buy the Nissan LEAF at this point, and frankly, I needed a new car, uh, and there aren't that many electric cars available. So you've asked me the benefits of owning an electric car, and I don't know all of them yet because I've only had the car for about three weeks, but clearly the one that's coming through loud and clear is that this car is less expensive to operate. It costs about eight cents a mile to operate this vehicle as opposed to the gas version, which at current uh, $4.50 a gallon for gas, it comes out to about 30 cents a mile to operate the gas version. And I have the potential to make my own electricity with my solar panel, so uh, that would make the car uh, free to operate. Um, it's obviously cleaner, uh, there's less maintenance, it doesn't need oil changes, I don't have to worry about drips in my garage. It's a quiet vehicle to operate and it's really solid technology. Okay, the downsides of the Nissan LEAF, and again, uh, I don't know all of them, and they aren't terrible, but the range is restricted to about 100 miles. But I found that when you go uh, uphill like to Makawao and come back down, when you're coming back downhill, it recharges the battery uh, and, and you end up uh, getting that mileage back on, on a downhill run. Uh, the other big drawback that I uh, foresee with owning this car is that the maintenance can only be done by the dealership. I would absolutely encourage people to buy a Nissan LEAF, but I think they need to be careful and talk to other owners and people who are driving them. Anybody who wants to ask me about it, I'm happy to talk with them about it. Because EVs are so new, there are still some technology hurdles for them to overcome. So we went to talk to another EV enthusiast about the biggest of these hurdles, batteries. What is the best battery technology for the car? That's, that's a really good question. First, we bet you're wondering what that little green car is behind it. Well, that's a flyboat. Buck imported flyboats from China in 2009. The flyboat has a lighter version of the smart car body. It is a plug-in EV. But because its max speed is 25 miles per hour, it must be driven on the side of the road when on highways. But anyway, back to the batteries. What is the best battery technology for the car? Hybrids nowadays are using nickel metal hydride, which is um, a very good choice. The Volt and the uh, Leaf, I think, are, are being uh, powered by Lithium. Now there's there's many different kinds. There's lithium iron, there's lithium phosphate, there's uh, ideally lithium air. There are many different kinds of chemistries and the problem is we don't really know what's going to work. So we need a new battery source that has more energy in it, uh, better energy density, more energy per pound, and something that's a whole lot cheaper. The weak spot in electrical vehicles right now is batteries and we're looking for lots of new technologies and it is a multi-billion dollar prize for whoever comes up with the answer. So are EVs really zero emission vehicles? Well, it depends on how you charge them. For most of us, if you were to plug in your EV at home, you'd be getting your electricity from Maui Electric Company's electric grid. So your EV would still be powered off Migos diesel generators and just 15% renewable energy sources. So we headed to Miko to ask them about this. 
and see what they are doing to add more renewable energy to the grid. It is, it is our understanding that it is cheaper, more efficient, and cleaner to power an electric vehicle for a mile than it is to power a mile using gasoline in an average internal combustion engine car. A Nissan LEAF has a 24 kilowatt hour battery. So to charge the battery from zero to full capacity, it would have cost approximately $8. The pilot program offers lower rates to encourage the charging of electric vehicles during off-peak periods, which occurs between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. In 2008, the Hawaiian Electric Companies, which includes Maui Electric Company, signed an agreement as part of the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative. The goal is to attain 70% of our energy needs from clean local sources by the year 2030. There are a couple of efforts. First is the greening of transportation through the use of electric vehicles. Another would be to increase the renewable energy component of electric power. In Hawaii, we are blessed with an abundant amount of resources that can be captured and converted to electrical power. Wind, solar, biofuel, hydro, and ocean and wave energy are just some examples of these sources. And each type can make a contribution as you work towards a sustainable future. So according to Miko, powering your EV off their grid even now is cheaper and produces less emissions than your gasoline vehicle. And this will become much more true as we move towards our 70% clean energy goal. But what about those who want to eliminate their use of fossil fuels right now? Could you power your car off solar panels? And how much would it cost? So to power one electric car, it's going to depend very much on how far you drive per day. But normally speaking, it would take approximately eight solar panels to drive 40 miles a day. So here we have two cars, two electric cars, what would be two parking stalls, and what would be a carport covering them. And nine panels is the same area as one parking stall. So what's interesting is actually in the space that it takes to actually park a car, if you just simply covered that area in photovolt photovoltaic panels, you'd have enough power for the car. So it would be possible to charge the batteries in the car directly off of the solar panels, but then what happens if cloud goes by and shades the panels, then, then the, the voltage drops. And this long term would not be good for the batteries. So a, a better solution is actually to feed the power from the photovoltaic panels into the grid and then use the power from the grid from the electric company to charge the cars. So at 100 miles a week you're driving about 15 miles a day and that would equ equate to about five gallons of gas a week or, f or uh, $20, $20 a week at, at the price of gas today. So it's about a thousand dollars a year in fuel and that system would be about $5,000 in photovoltaics. It would take approximately five years to pay that back. So I think in 10 years time, people will just have a small amount of photovoltaics for their electric cars, but they will also be powering their whole houses with them. And so we'll be looking at um, what we would call a self-powered environment. A self-powered environment? Cool, but is anyone actually living like this already? Well, it turns out someone is, and we decided to find him and see what he had to say about his completely solar-powered life. I really wanted to get off foreign oil. I live off the grid. I live as clean a life as I can, and still driving the car was uh, not in alignment with the rest of my life. And so I wanted to, the minute it became available, to have a solar-powered car. And so I ordered it three years ago and uh, got on the waiting list, and it's here, and I love it. Well, the benefits are I get to drive past gas stations now just laughing. That feels really good. And it's an enormous cost savings in the end. And I'm not polluting and I get to drive. And it's emissions free, which feels great. And um, I get to be really mean to Prius drivers. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. And um, I don't know, you know, I don't really see the cons um, because the Volt has the little gas backup, you know, 
if I need to go beyond my range, which has happened twice now in the three months that I've owned it, then I can drive and get 40 miles a gallon. I've gone 2,200 miles on two gallons of gas. So I'm getting 1,100 miles a gallon so far. I needed to add nine panels to my system to power the Volt, which cost around $7,000. So if you break that down, that's about what I would have spent in two years on gas. And that's if gas stays the same price, which it's not, it's gonna go way up. And so basically in two years, not only will I be driving pollution free, but it will be free. My entire system consists of 23 solar panels and 24 batteries. That whole system, including all the labor to install it is under $30,000. That will power my car and my life for the rest of my life, as far as I'm concerned. And um, you know, it's a large investment in the beginning, $30,000, but compared to what I would have been spending on electricity and what I would have been spending on gas and oil and all that, it's nothing, it's about four to five years. That amount of panels powers everything, literally. It powers my electric lawnmower, it powers all my tools, they're all electric, you know, rechargeable. And I think that people can't afford not to do this. You know, people have this illusion that they can't afford to do it, but so they're gonna stay in a system that's just evil, and in the end, they're spending a lot more money. You know, if the government were to really care, what they would go in and do is finance every house in America which could live like this, which is about two thirds of them in the southern uh, part of the country. But the oil companies, unfortunately, have lobbyists that are very, very, very powerful. It'll be interesting to see how it all ends up, but hopefully this will inspire some people. For many years, gasoline vehicles have impacted the environment by emitting greenhouse gases, polluting the atmosphere, and using limited fossil fuels. Recent developments in technology have made electric vehicles more available to the public. This combined with government incentives could make electric vehicles strong enough to join the race against gasoline vehicles. In the end, it looks like electric vehicles may eventually pull ahead and make old inefficient gas guzzlers a thing of the past.